Dear Glowstick Entertainment, Hi! Um, sorry for being a bit obnoxious about this video, but uh, it's important, I swear. Anyway, I want this video to be as short as possible, so uh, whoosh! Most of you already know, or have guessed at this point, that Dark Deception is one of my favorite games of all time, with that opinion most likely being amplified when Chapter 4 comes out. However, it's not perfect. No game is, but in my opinion, Dark Deception suffers from one glaring game design flaw that ultimately worsens the experience for most players. Is it the many bugs and game-breaking glitches present in the game? Not necessarily. You see, glitches, bugs, whatever you want to call them, they're most so a programming fuck-up. No offense to Nixon, he's an amazing programmer, thank you very much. But yeah, glitches for the most part can be easily fixed with a patch or something, while a game design problem isn't as simple to solve. So yes, while the bugs are pretty bad and should definitely be ironed out eventually, they're not the main focus of today's video. I'm really not trying to hype it up or anything, it's honestly a fairly simple term, containing only two words. It's... <laughs> difficulty balancing. Oh boy, here we go. Difficulty balancing is a somewhat often term used in video games and game design. As the name suggests, it's, well, the balancing of a game's difficulty. A good example is progressive difficulty, in which the player's journey gets harder as they progress in the game. The subject's a bit more open-ended than I'm honestly making it out to be, but to keep things simple, usually the first level in a game is one of the easiest, while the last level is one of the hardest. So, what does all this have to do with Dark Deception, and where slash why does the game fail in this field? Well, look at the levels themselves. Monkey Business, despite it being the first portal, is one of the hardest levels in the game, especially casually. Elementary Evil, the stage right after, is, weirdly enough, one of the easiest levels in the game. But then there's Daily Decadence, the very next nightmare, which is one of, if not the hardest level in the game so far, followed by Stranger Sewers, which is one of the easiest levels in the game. Do you see where I'm getting at here? The difficulty curve in Dark Deception is unbalanced as all hell, if not non-existent, which completely throws any sort of fluid gameplay experience the game might have had out the window. So what's the cause of this problem? Well, while there obviously isn't a true answer to this question, I have a solid guess. You see, the game was released in chapters. Now that's not the main issue, mind you. How they handled the chapter by chapter releases, however, is. Take a look at this chart again, but this time separate it into individual groups. It all makes sense, doesn't it? Monkey Business used to be easy, but its difficulty was ramped up to where it is now. Elementary Evil was the first level of Chapter 2, with Daily Decadence being the last. Glowstick, however, got quite a lot of complaints about Daily Decadence's difficulty, so they made Stranger Sewers easier. Plus, it's also the first level of Chapter 3. Critical Evil is just fine, though. In my opinion, and keep in mind that this is just a theory by the way, Glowstick just didn't manage to handle the chapter by chapter system too well, which led to this absurd difficulty quote unquote curve. But you know what they say, you can't critique something without offering a solution to it. So how do we fix this problem? Well actually, there are two options here, and I'll make sure to point out my personal favorite when we get to it. The first option is for them to completely rebalance the game's difficulty, possibly including chapters 4 and 5 when they come out. For example, making the murder monkeys less aggressive, making Angatha teleport a bit more frequently when she's not chasing you, making the gold watchers a bit slower and slightly easier to avoid, making the dread Akis a bit faster, buffing Malak's section chapter 3 making him an actual threat. The clown gremlins, honestly, they can just stay as they are. With these few changes, the game's difficulty curve is already looking a lot easier to swallow, and who's to say the closing can stop there? But I'm getting a bit ahead of myself at this point. In conclusion, any sort of major difficulty rebalancing would go a long way in helping the game's overall flow improve and, to put it simply, make it more, well, fun. But now we have the second solution, my personal favorite, and it's even something Glowstick has thought of in the past. However, I feel like it doesn't get the amount of recognition it really deserves, and it's a pretty simple idea. Restarting from checkpoint with all the shards you've collected so far. So I know what you're thinking. Adding such a feature would completely remove the game's challenge, since the player can just keep on dying until they win. Yes, that is true, if the system worked that way. Let me explain. So you lose your lives, you died, game over, etc, and now there are three options. Restart, which obviously restarts the entire stage with no extra penalty towards the player's ranking apart from the fact that they go back to the beginning. 
last checkpoint, which loads the latest checkpoint the player has passed in the current stage, with the penalty for using it being that they can't get an S rank. And lastly, we have the obvious and mandatory Rage Kit button. So, how can a restarting from checkpoint with all the shards the player has collected so far system, or as I'm going to be calling it from now, respawning, work alongside those options? Well, I have a few ideas. First and foremost, it will obviously make it impossible for the player to get an S rank on that stage. That would just be a dumb thing to include. Second of all, it will affect the player's ranking in some way, either lowering the final rank by one, or, my personal favorite, not giving the player a ranking at all. So theoretically, if a player was to use this function on every stage, the replay menu would look like this, obviously indicating that they use this method to beat the stage. Lastly, I actually want to propose an alternative version of this respawning system I just thought of. The player will get one extra life, one more chance to either beat the stage or reach a further checkpoint, at the cost of lowering their final ranking by one. This risk and reward system would add quite a lot of strategy and thought to an otherwise seemingly broken mechanic. Should I respawn but risk lowering my final rank further by dying just once, or do I just restart from the checkpoint without risking that possibility? And yes, I am talking about the final ranking, and yes, this effect can be multiplied by how many times the player uses the respawn. In my opinion, this system would add a lot more thought to an otherwise simple choice the game over screen gives to the player. But in conclusion, both of these options are great and could even work even better if paired together in some sort of balancing update. But really, I wouldn't mind Glossic starting off with the respawning system first, since it's probably the easier one to implement, and then rebalancing the levels afterwards, or only going with one or the other, or neither, and they just come up with an even better system. At the end of the day, I really think it's important for this problem to be fixed, and for Dark Deception to be improved overall. I love this game, I really do, and I just hate seeing all these things holding it back from becoming the masterpiece that it deserves to be. Sure, Chapter 4 is more important, I get that, and I don't expect this to be fixed tomorrow or even alongside Chapter 4. I just hope that sometime in the future, either after Chapter 4, or Chapter 5, or whenever, they take a step back and fix these problems, from the glitches, to these design flaws, not for me, or even the fans, but for Dark Deception, to make it the best game it can possibly be. Also, for the people who are going to be like, Glossic legally can't use fan ideas in the game, or whatever, here! <clears throat> I, using a 57 going by the legal name of Give the video game company, Glossk Entertainment, permission to use any of the ideas proposed and slash or shared in this specific YouTube video called Dark Deception's Biggest Problem, including, but not limited to, names and gameplay concepts. I agree to not legally act against Glossk Entertainment for unwillingly giving the company all the copyright rights to use these ideas in their video game, Dark Deception, with no sort of credit required. Signed, January 13th, 2021. Now, let's just hope that this won't bite me in the ass in the future. Fuck!